Yes, hello everyone. A very good evening and we are excited to have you join us for this session. We believe it will bring significant value to your career and we have some fantastic insights to share and we'll wrap up the, uh, this session with an engaging Q&A. So, uh, try to put all your questions in the chat box. Our team from backend will be picking up uh, the best questions and we'll uh, try to pick all the questions up and uh, we try to answer it. So, uh, yes. I'll be your host for the session and with me we have our honored guest Priyanka Jain, a tech recruitment expert with over a decade of experience, currently working as a senior talent acquisition leader at Bloomreach. So welcome Priyanka. Thank you. Thank you Deva for the warm welcome. I'm very excited to talk to the people and to share a few insights about the remote work. I hope it will help. Great, great. So before we dive into the session's agenda, I would like to to introduce you guys to our Remote Revolution series. So at Uplers, our mission is to streamline the hiring process, making it reliable, simple and fast. And therefore, Remote Revolution is an initiative wherein we invite speakers from top-notch companies like Twilio, GitLab, Atlassian, Browser Stack and many more to share their insights on how these remote companies hire, their process, culture, values, interview tips and remote readiness traits. So our mission behind this initiative is to upskill you guys to get a, a good remote opportunity. So moving forward to the session agenda, today Priyanka will uh, take us through her journey. She'll share insights into her role. She'll talk about the unique culture and values at Bloom Beach and her experience working with the remote team. Following that, she'll talk about the intricate hiring process at Bloom Beach. We'll address the critical questions. What skills does it take to crack an interview in a top global brand? So, uh, welcome Priyanka. Let's jump right into the session. To start with, could you uh, begin by sharing a bit about your career journey and your current role at Bloom Beach? Sure. Thanks, Divya. So, as Divya mentioned, I have like almost 10 years of experience into tech recruitment. I started my career with consultings, where I used to be hiring for startups, mid-sized companies and big brands like Amazon Uber as well. and. Uh, after spending about six to seven years into consulting firms where I built the uh, hiring uh, team, the engineering team from scratch from zero to one and scaled the team from, from one level to another. Uh, after spending so much of time, like six, seven years, I thought I should uh, join a particular corporate world where I can understand more about the uh, process, what usually happens in the companies. Because when you're part of a consulting, you just get to know more about the sourcing, the expectation uh, of the role. But when you join a particular corporate world, then you understand deep dive to the process, like what exactly company wants and what they want to deliver and how we can cater that particular request. So after spending six, seven years, I uh, I made my move to a to a fintech startup, which is a US based fintech startup that is Bright Money. Uh, where I was working with the uh, C type, uh, C executive people, like I was directly working with the founders and, uh, you know, CFO and the CPO, uh, where I, I was hiring the team, uh, engineering for the product, for the data science, and I also started hiring for non-tech roles from there only. After spending one and a half years, I switched my role uh, to Bloomreach because uh, uh, Bloomreach was comparatively a big organization and there was a big charter to explore. Uh, there were many senior positions that I was looking forward to close and uh, so that's why I, I joined Bloombridge in June 2022. Recently completed my two years at Bloombridge and here I am the only person responsible for doing everything right from the zero to one, like right from the sourcing, screening, scheduling interviews, stakeholder management and offer, offer closure negotiation and everything and also taking care like how employees are feeling about the company, taking care of the culture and the values in, in the organization. And that's all about me. Oh, great. So thank you. Thank you so much for uh, your amazing introduction and your extensive experience and passion for talent acquisition is truly inspiring. And we're exci excited to learn from your expertise today. So um, many of us struggle with job applications and landing the right rules. It's common to face rejections or silence after applying to numerous companies. So from your experience, what critical aspects should candidates focus on during their job search? Could you share some specific tips and strategies to help our audience enhance their chance of success? Sure. Uh, so 
obviously there are many ways where you can uh, you know uh, you can just apply to a particular job and you can get the success i would like to share few of them uh, so when it comes to a application any job application what exactly we look for uh, obviously when it comes to a virtual job setup resume is the first thing that is the that is making your first impression or that is making the first impression of any candidate teacher so i will uh, usually suggest or i will all i always advise to to my candidates or to any applicants that you you need to work on your cv because this is the first thing that is going to make your first impression because it is a virtual culture these days you're not coming to the company you're not presenting yourself your re- resume is presenting yourself so uh, you need to really work on the particular cv i have seen many cases like in my in my career that now it's been more than 4 years like post covid i think i am working remotely only and uh, uh, arranging interviews remotely only and uh, hiring people so i have seen people maybe they are very good in the technical side they they can definitely crack the tech interviews but it will happen when they'll get this particular opportunity to to crack the gate to you know come to the process so resume is the very first thing if you are not working on your resume if your resume is not presentable i don't think any recruiter or any hiring team will give you a chance because we uh, have you know n number of applications to look after and if your resume is not making any impression obviously will not usually the hiring team will not give a minute to think about it okay should i call should i not should i give him a chance or not because we have lot of applicants so uh, if your resume is relevant if your resume is talking a lot about your personality about your about your particular skills about your relevancy i think that is the only opportunity to crack that particular gate where you can come in and then you can present yourself and you can start to uh, you know uh, present yourself in the interview process so i have seen people like uh, the very first mistake that i would like to highlight people do share the resume in the word format which is a big no maybe that word format is working in your system but but when you're uploading to a particular data system, uh, particular job when you're applying to a particular job it happens like maybe that word format is a bit different in the in the other laptops and when we try to see it maybe we are not able to see the particular text format it is not we are we are not able to see at times we are not able to download at uh, at times so i always suggest people to upload or apply uh, their cv in a pdf format that is a very very basic step so that we can look for a right formatting and whenever it comes to cv maybe uh, there are n number of recruiters they have a different style of screening but if i talk about myself and the people that i've worked with either the hiring team or the recruiting team anyone i think people do start uh, you know from the from education background the company background the project relevancy the skill set and everything sometimes uh, i have observed like people try to create the resume in like four to five pages and the hiring team do not even bother to read the entire text so i will suggest people to make it a short snapshot uh, of your career but make it very very relevant it should have the information about your education background it should have all the relevant information about your projects that you worked on so far it should have all the information about uh, the tech stack that you worked on or the tech stack that you want to explore so this is very very important and if there is a gap in your profile then i will suggest make it a one line or something to mention that particular reason because sometimes people feel that okay there is a gap oh he is not working or she is not working from past 7 8 months or one year he should not be a hands on coder or a hands on on a particular tech stack so try to mention the relevant reason because we do understand that people can have the particular challenges as well maybe he or she has been laid off or maybe he or she has some personal commitment to to make it or he or she had maybe a travel plan or something like this so try to highlight that in in the resume because you are not coming to the company to mention your reason your resume is talking on your behalf so it is very very important that you create your cv in a very much presentable way and uh, hiring team sh- should consider you for the interview process at least so try to make it in a pdf format try to mention your education background the project that you worked on the companies that you worked on and the tech stack that you have worked on so far like usually uh, i have observed whenever i uh, 
see a particular profile i get very impressed okay this is a very good education background and he's working in in a very top notch product companies and uh, definitely it could be a hit when i try to connect with him or her on a call and i try to understand okay what is the tech stack that you worked on then they mention about let's say for example they they say okay i i uh, i have built the microservices i built the apis and all that i have worked on python java or scala spark or anything they try to mention and they try to highlight these in, in the call the hr screening call but when you look the cv sometimes they miss to mention in the cv so this is a big no because maybe that hr has called you because he or she was impressed by your education background or maybe because of the company background or maybe that hr has that particular knowledge okay this company works on that particular tech stack because she or he has hired uh, talent from that company in the past itself so that is why he has given you a chance to make a call but you missed it you missed it to mention in the uh, profile so it is very very important to mention in the profile also sometimes hiring team do research okay he hasn't worked on the gcp he hasn't worked on aws or not hasn't worked on python i will give it a reject so please mention each and everything in your resume because it is as i mentioned earlier it is creating the very uh, very first impression of your particular candidate so that is the very first pointer second is uh, build a strong online presence so i was talking to my hiring uh, team like my stakeholders that i'm currently working with and dealing with on a day to day basis so i am my weekly sync up with each and every one so this is something that i am observing from past many years and this is something which is a very recent case of uh, one of my hiring uh, hiring project so the uh, hiring manager was like priyanka cvs are looking good but there is no highlight there, there, there is no one who is highlighting about the uh, about their portfolio which is very very important like uh, you should uh, if you have any particular website or if you have any particular uh, portfolio i think why to hide it you should always highlight that particular in your resume for example if i'm hiring for a designer i'm not going to impress uh, to get impressed from the cv itself obviously i need to look your work on dribble or brihans or whatever platform you're using for designing projects if not me the hiring team is very sure about it that they need that particular portfolio to look after it if i'm hiring for a developer then my hiring team definitely wants a uh, you know stack overflow profile or a github contribution so this is these are very important and every developer every designer whether it is data scientist or designer or developers everyone has their own online, online presence but they usually forget to highlight or to mention in their resume or if they are available on the, those platform they usually forget to update those platforms so if hiring manager is going to that particular portfolio or website to check your work how are you contributing and how much you are active to the open source platform then if it is not updated then it is of no use because again as as i said we have lot of candidates you are not going to give you that particular chance not everyone is going to give you a particular chance to understand okay uh when was your last contribution definitely they'll check that online platform and they'll they'll feel okay he or she is a very active coder or a designer or a data scientist or anything so whether it, it is your linkedin profile or your social uh, portfolio whether it is your github stack overflow behance dribble or anything please make sure that you have a strong online presence and if it is there it has to be updated and it has to be there in your resume so that people can take the reference from there and can uh, you know uh, give the particular view point okay this candidate is relevant to that particular role or not so this is very very important and i don't think in these days like in this is a very competitive market i don't think people do not have this do not have their presence on these platform we all have but we usually forget to update and we usually forget to make it uh, available on the required platform so please make sure that you you add that particular links to your resume or while sending any profile to your to any company so make sure you uh, share that particular links with the with the hiring team third is prepare for the virtual interviews this is very very important uh i have seen many cases uh, like when i'm scheduling an interviews i am doing my follow ups okay uh, a gentle reminder for your interview at 4 pm 2 pm 3 pm any time and they are saying okay i'll be available 
so what usually happens uh, sometimes uh, the hiring team the interview uh, the team that who is going to take the interview is like priyanka waiting at the link the candidate has not joined can you please check so this is very important you should uh, prepare for virtual interviews in 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 every ways whether it is to whether it is related to technical uh, capabilities or whether it is related to communication uh, capabilities or whether it is related to remote work dynamics you should always try to join like 5 or 7 minutes ago so that you can check the proper setup the link is working or not uh, are you able to join or not or are you aware about that particular tool that you are going to use for the virtual interview for example i have arranged an interview with zoom but let's say you are using zoom for first time so if you are aware about it okay zoom is something new to you you have to make sure like have you installed the zoom setup or the microsoft team setup or a slack setup whatever the mode of the interview is the particular software available in your laptop is your webcam working speaker working head headset working and it is a very common issue like if you join the interview then sometimes happens you know uh, you join but there is a lot of disturbance coming from your end so make sure you are sitting in a sitting at a quiet place where there is no disturbance so interview can trust on you okay you are sitting alone and you are very focused to the particular interview so these are the very uh, you know uh, generic things that you should uh, take care you should uh, do the proper analysis before joining the interview whether your webcam is working with and we are working in a remote culture so obviously uh, if you are arranging any remote interviews it can happen with anyone it can happen with interview also interviewer as well you should always uh, have your secondary device handy with you it can happen that your inter in, uh, internet can stop working so you should have a backup device always with you if that is not working that you can just connect quickly with the other device so these are the very basic steps you should have the uh, you should be familiar with the remote productivity tools or the interview set up tools whether it's slack zoom microsoft teams or anything you should be ready with all the, these things uh, in advance so that you can create a best impact and you'll not feel okay you're feeling embarrassed or you're feeling shy in the interview process so the, these 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 things i think really gives you a very much confidence if you are prepared uh, in advance so this is very important step otherwise usually interviewer ex, uh, complain okay i had to drop the call or he had to drop the call because of the network issues because of the connectivity he couldn't share the screen um, he couldn't talk properly his mic was not working so these are the very common things so we should take care of the things in the advance because this is again making a very impactful impression of your candidature of your personality how much you are serious about the role how much you are serious about this interview and how much this interview or the role is important in your life so i think this is a very basic step the fourth is research the company uh, this is again a very common mistake that i have observed especially with the people who are at the initial stage who are uh, interviewing for a very entry level positions uh, i agree that whenever a candidate comes to a job market a x y z is not the only company you know to apply for they are definitely applying to 10 20 or maybe 100 of companies and they must be getting call with all of them or maybe 50 percent of them and it is literally i do understand that it is it is hard to remember that okay what is the particular company profile but at least make sure before coming to the interview process you research about the company what does the company do what is the problem they are trying to solve and uh, what is the hiring team and you know what are the competitors and everything you should know of each and every minor detail which a candidate should have before coming to the process it will help you in in every way because if you research about the company if you read about the company then you will know okay is this the right opportunity for you or not it will help you to make a right decision uh, second is like it will create a better impression in front of the panelist also because obviously if you have researched about the company or anything if you read anything it is it will be there that you will have some questions around it and if you will have questions around it definitely it will make a two way communication and every hiring team wants that they really want that to, you know i should not be the only one who will ask question who should interview people like the candidate 
should also be interested in asking question about the company they should have done some research about the team that they getting they are getting hired for and the work they are getting uh, getting in this particular team or the company and they should have question related to the to the role to the growth of of their own in this particular company and everything so i think this is very very important i have seen people they they were technically good but hiring manager said specifically to me priyanka drop this candidate because i didn't feel that belongingness you know this candidate is shopping around he's just coming to the process and he has given so many interviews that is why he's trained enough his he was able to clear but i couldn't connect with him and this is very important when it comes to a virtual setup because when you're going to office and everything definitely maybe on day 1 or after a week or after a month you will definitely get along with your team and you will get n number of opportunities to talk to them and to you know to make a connections with them but when it comes to virtual setup this is the opportunity for you when you are creating a impact when you are communicating with the team hiring team and usually hiring team is is your own team like as i'm hiring for a back end team so back end team is going to take your interviews if you will get selected you are going to work with uh, with them only if you are creating an impression during the interview process only i think this is the right opportunity for you to impress them and when you come and join they will definitely help you they will act like a buddy of yours because they know okay this candidate has a different type of persona i could relate with him or her so this is the opportunity to for you to build the connection with the hiring team at a very first stage step so research about the company you should have some uh understanding about the product or the problem that the company is trying to solve which will uh, make a sense of responsibility and which you know it which interviewer can feel okay this candidate belongs to here i think this is very very important and i am this is not something that i am saying on my own this is something i am saying on the uh, based of the data like i am working as i mentioned i work, i'm working in a recruitment field from past 10 years and this is the most important feedback you know that i have received so far uh from from the hiring team the stakeholders uh, you know this candidate was good because he has done a very detailed research about the company and this candidate was bad because he was not even aware about the team that he's getting hired for then why is he getting interviewed for and literally i have seen cases like when i'm when i'm giving the first call i am explain each and every thing about the company and the role and everything and that candidate is the inbound application that candidate has applied on his own still i'm giving a call i'm explaining each and everything I'm spending 10 to 15 minutes in just explaining the company and the product and everything but let's say i'm scheduling the interview after a week and when i'm giving the reminder call okay you have an interview tomorrow please be available then you they usually ask okay priyanka for which company and this literally irritates me you know you have an interview tomorrow this is something happening from past one and half uh, uh, week and you're still not aware about the product if you have given your assurance about the particular interview process at least you should ask question who is going to interview me can i see his linkedin profile how many years of experience you have he has and you should have done some research about the company these are the very important aspect and this literally shows your personality how much serious you are about this particular company and the role so i think this is very very important second uh, like last is like as a previously covered in the previous slide as well like prepare questions you have to make sure that you are making the interview is a two way communication i mean this is very very important that i always communicate to my candidates first call is going to happen with the hiring manager and this is an opportunity for you to ask anything or everything related to company related to role related to your growth how will you grow in this organization within this role what will be the next step he'll be the best person or she'll be the best person to answer all your question try to make it a two way communication do not let the interviewer ask each and every question you should also have uh, questions and this is something that i have again felt with the with the entry level candidates only like the people who have like 0 to 4 or 5 years of experience like when it comes to a leadership hiring they are very particular they are very choosy about it like for which company they are applying and for which they for which company they are getting interviewed for maybe because they are uh, very serious about their move i'm not saying the people at the entry level are not serious but they are they really want to explore different options 
but senior people are very particular about choosing an option uh, so these type of question you should prepare the questions about your growth about your role and everything i will give you a case uh, i'll give you an example from yesterday's interview only i scheduled an interview for a senior director role and it was it was an introductory call for an hour and that candidate was so involved in the discussion he called me and said priyanka can you schedule one more introductory call because my answers i couldn't uh, get the answers of all my questions i had so many more when i passed this feedback to the hiring manager he was so impressed he was so impressed he was like yes priyanka do that because this is very very important and this shows that okay candidate is really involved in the process and is really serious about this position and whenever he'll make a decision about about any company because whenever a candidate coming into market bloomridge is not the only option but he will know everything and everything about the company then he will make the decision very carefully so rather wasting the time to the team process and everything the technical discussion we should invest one more hour so that we can clarify and he can decide whether this is a right opportunity for him or not i am not saying we are the best company obviously there are better companies than bloomridge as well so if you have any doubt just have that exploratory call just make it very very clear and then go to the process because when you are coming to the process it is not just our time it is your time as as well which is very much valuable and you're wasting a four to five hours during the process and then if you're saying no okay this is not something aligned to your expectation again this is a waste of time for both the parties if not if you are not valuing our time at least value to your time so this is very very important so prepare questions so that you can you can have all the information before the process gets started and you can save your time as well and you can save your energy as well so i think this is very very important next is a uh, demonstrate tech savviness whenever you are coming to the process you should highlight okay what knowledge do you have are you really comfortable the remote tools that are available in the market uh, the the tools that are we are that companies are using for productivity management or anything uh, try to highlight during your conversation so that people will get impressed okay this person is uh, is very easy to train because he is he's aware or she is aware about the process and the uh, you know uh, mark current market and everything the tools and everything and when it comes to obviously technical interviews try to uh, update yourself with the latest technology latest framework and try to reflect those skill set in your interview process uh, do not just hold yourself whatever they are asking and you are just answering that try to highlight your craziness or your hunger towards that particular tech stack and try to uh, demonstrate those particular uh, you know tech stack which is there in the jd use that those particular keywords to express yourself to express your uh, work experience this is very very important because these definitely creates a very very valuable impact and the impression to your to your profile i i totally believe in that because i have seen feedback where the interviewer highlight about it okay this candidate has a very strong knowledge or maybe he doesn't have this knowledge but he has highlighted that he wants to learn that particular tech stack so this is very very important great so thank you thank you so much for uh, your amazing insights and i'm sure everyone here is will be excited to apply these invaluable tips in their jobs or search for remote positions or even for other positions as well your expertise uh, like your expert uh, advice has undoubtedly provided us with the tools to navigate the job market more effectively and achieve greater success in our career pursuits So uh, now, um, as you have already discussed in the previous slides, the importance of knowing about or researching about the companies. So we have the insights into the key aspects of applying to various companies, and it's evident that there are multiple rounds and considerations to manage before pursuing a new role. So let's discuss some other aspects as well. So as this uh, slide talks about Bloom Beach, so as uh, Priyanka already told you guys that about the importance of knowing. about the company so let's discuss in detail uh, and let's know about bloomridge as an organization sure uh, so bloomridge i hope everyone is aware that it is a product based company it got started in 2009 
it is a b2b saas based product which is designed to enhance the commerce experience through personalized marketing product discovery and the content management so to make you understand better i will go one by one with each bloomridge pillar so very first is discovery where we are offering ai driven search and merchandising so what does that mean is like i will i would like to give you an example to make you understand better you guys uh, you know uh, whenever we go to a particular website for example uh, we are going to amazon and we start typing for example playstation or ps5 or something like that so let's say i'm typing play then if you see that station is coming in the down drop section basically they are understanding what we are trying to type it and they are giving you auto suggestions okay maybe play games or playstation or anything so this is the uh, search platform or you can the search semantic uh, semantic search that amazon is using to ease the job of a customer what exactly customer is looking to search for but not every company has the same kind of help so we are also working on the semantic search if customer is going to a particular website and typing something we try to give the auto auto results to them auto suggestions based on the previous history maybe or based on the uh, uh, particular you know word that they are trying to figure it out so i i i would like to give one more example so for example sometimes you go to a website and you type wooden table in the search bar uh but if you type wooden table some website are not able to understand what is wooden table they are showing you products related to wood as well and related to table as well it could be a plastic table as well it could be a wooden chair as well and sometimes customers get irritated because they are not getting the appropriate result and they leave the website without making any purchase which is again impacting the revenue of the organization so we are working on the semantic search as i mentioned in discovery pillar we are literally offering the better search and the merchandising we are trying to understand what customer is looking for and we we are giving them the proper result sometimes you must have observed if you are writing ps5 you are getting ps5 but if you are writing playstation 5 maybe it is not able to understand your search so we are working on the search optimization using the power of ai it is a product that we have built now other companies are using this as a service to drive the true personalization and the digital commerce growth so this is a very important pillar of bloomridge second is a uh, content where we offer the headless content management support as i as i mentioned like you know uh, related to content if you are typing something uh, what exactly you are looking for give the proper content idea to you and help you to the help you to search the proper uh, result for example uh, if you are going to mintra for shopping if you try to open any product in mintra and uh, if you open that product if you will see that if you scroll down in the mintra app, there is a section called you may also like so that is a recommendation system that mintra has built to attract or engage the consumer on their platform so that consumer end up buy something which increase the revenue of mintra but not every company has the same kind of help so we are we have a pillar this content management system whatever you are looking for based on your search history we are also recommending you the similar kind of products so that we can give you a better suggestion or maybe we can increase your suggestions so that you will end up buy something and it will increase the revenue of that particular website or the or the application so again this is a particular product that we have developed and other companies are using this as a service on their platform for example mark and serve mark and spencer bosch puma staples there are more than 850 global brand who are using bloomreach as a service on their platform so that they can generate uh, more revenue the very last and the very important pillar is engagement sometimes you notice you open a zomato app and you look for a particular dish or you look for a particular restaurant but you come out you leave the website or application without making an order but after some point of time you will see that you start getting knock notification from zomato you have left something you forgot to order or something like that so not every company has the same kind of engagement help so again this is a product that we have developed uh, where we are offering other companies so that they can provide the marketing automation solutions to their consumers like by email push notification or anything okay you forgot something in your cart or this is the offer that is running out 
or today is a anniversary day today is a father's day or mother's day you can buy something this and that so these are the marketing or engagement solution which will connect people to that particular website by a push notification basically any marketing automation solution this is what we are offering in in, in our engagement pillar so these are the core pillars so in short we are helping other companies to personalize the online shopping experience for their consumers so it's a b2b saas based model where we are helping companies to uh, make a better commerce experience for the consumers so that is what bloombridge is all about great uh, thank you for introducing us to bloombridge amazing so that brings us to the next slide uh, the culture at bloombridge so once you know about the company it's important to know the culture as well when applying to a company preparing for the cultural aspect is crucial to showcase your alignment with the company's values environment and what other work it was so this is not this not only enhances your chance during the interview but also lays the groundwork for a positive and fruitful relationship with the organization if you join so priyanka could you tell us something about the culture at bloomdich when it comes to culture i will say this is 10 on 10 uh i mean it's been 2 years and i have no complaints so far and this is something it is not something that is just saying by me i mean you can check our class door reviews as well everyone will talk about the culture only so this is the best part and when especially when you work at a virtual setup it is very hard to maintain but i think this is the only strongest this is the one of the strongest pillar at bloomridge which is making this culture amazing because we are giving the flexibility or uh, to the employees that they can work from anywhere or everywhere so if i talk about specific uh, mission or vision of bloombridge when it comes to culture so our people are very much committed to make bloombridge successful and on the other hand bloombridge is very much committed to create a impactful experience for the people so in bloombridge uh, you will feel that you know uh, the culture is like is something which is like where we are deeply committed to our mission and to each other's success we always celebrate each other's success and we always work towards a particular shared goals and we literally value our team we literally feel respected and we always feel that belongingness in in the team and we always feel that okay our feedback matters to the company i mean there is a monthly survey that we always run in our company where we do listen like what employees thinking about the company and what is something that is bothering them and what is something that they are appreciating so we always care about those feedbacks we always discuss those feedbacks in our uh, you know monthly meetups and uh, biweekly meetups whenever it happens all hands meeting and everything and we do consider those feedback and we try to we never afraid to make any changes when when employees are not happy and i have seen many changes happening in bloomridge when it comes to a make make it a better culture so this is the best part i think we have a number of benefits but culture is the top most i will say this is like literally 10 on 10 people are really committed towards each other and we, we i mean i will say that there is no office politics at all so this is really amazing and you really feel that you are getting valued and your feedbacks are getting appreciated and well they you feel welcomed in the organization so this is the best part okay Uh, so thank you thank you priyanka for giving us a glimpse into the vibrant culture at bloomridge insights into commitment a culture that prioritizes mutual success is inspiring so let's move to the next slide which is which talks about bloomridge's core value so this knowledge also helps in presenting yourself as a well prepared and committed candidate during the application and interview process because we usually prepare so hard for the technical rounds that we miss out certain pointers which is really essential for cultural round so over to you priyanka so uh, we have the uh, five core values that we strongly believe in and uh, very first is truth as this is a very self explanatory we are very honest all the times and we are very transparent with each other say for example i mean this is something i have always said to my manager as well you know i have worked with four or five companies before i won't say that these were bad those were bad companies but i will definitely say very proudly this is the best company why because here i am not afraid to share anything or everything with my manager we are not afraid about you know to share negative feedbacks as well if you are not liking anything 
we are open to get that particular thing so we are very truthful and we try to be trans- we all we are always transparent with with the teams and with the different departments as well so we we always try to challenge when it, whenever it matters whether it is your stakeholder whether it is your manager so truth is is the key when it when it comes to bloomridge core values uh, so this is this is what truth defines for and uh, second is think for any decision for any change that you want to make it happen we always think about it what could be the pros or what could be the cons and we always look for improvements and we always make the fact based decision so we always think about to make any changes and based on the data we implement anything it is not the case that okay executive team has decided something it will happen now no we should have we always do some particular research about that particular change and we always try to make a fact based decision so this is a think uh, value signifies for next is own own means definitely the ownership we always ensure that every activity has a clear and empowered owner i have my manager but if anything is related to recruitment which is happening in india i mean i am the owner i do not want, i i mean i there is no need to seek any particular uh, you know permission or anything if if it is if it is coming to uh, recruitment or related to sourcing strategies hiring process i am free to make my own decision so this is something that bloomrich really cares for like every activity has a clear and empowered owner you feel that okay this is your job this is your company and that's why you i think this is the most important thing and that's why you start giving your 100% when you feel this is your own baby next is no drama as i earlier mentioned that culture you know there is no office politics we always treat everyone with respect and we always listen to each and every employee and you know we expect and accept each and every feedback so there is no drama in the company whether you you are getting a you have a conversation with cpo or cto or ceo you're free to say anything or everything which is relevant or in the favor of the organization so there is no drama about it and next is we we as this uh, clearly defines uh, it's a very self explanatory like we all work together for a common purpose and we literally celebrate each other's success so this is about to be we literally care about each other great now uh, thank you for sharing these core values uh, moving on to the next slide which is intro- about interview process so understanding the interview process is crucial as it helps candidates prepare effectively align expectations and showcase their best qualities and skills so this slide is really important for the people who are willing to apply at bloom beach so over to you priyanka so this is a standard process whether it is a tech hiring or product hiring or data science or non tech or anything or it whether it is happening in india or us or europe so uh, we have a standard process for five rounds sometimes i will not say that it is a very hard core uh, thing sometimes when there is a mixed feedback it could there could be a six round process as well but standard is a five round process whether it is for india or us or europe so very first is you know uh, uh, whenever a candidate is applying or whenever a recruiter is head hunting any profile via any social platform there is a recruiter screening call where we try to understand the candidate aspiration and we try to make them understand what company is looking for basically recruiter bridge the gap between the talent and the opportunity after that there is a team discussion process where the team that we are get, we are hiring for these people come into the picture and usually uh, check the tech related uh, knowledge of that particular candidate whether this candidate has that particular right skill set or technology information about this particular role whether he or she can add the value to the organization or to the overall success of the organization or whether we can add value to his candidature or not then hiring manager meeting of course this is a very important and this is this is the this is a two way communication process to be very honest because hiring manager means he or she will be your manager if you come and join us so he or she will be the best person to answer your question so this is an opportunity for each candidate to ask anything or everything related to role related to company and related to his growth in this organization 
and hiring manager will also try to understand if there were any red flags from recruiter from team discussions related to any topic he'll try to cover all those in this in his meeting and he will make sure whether this is a right fit or not for his team because he knows better after that there is a department uh, lead discussion the manager of your manager will come to a come into a picture and will try to check the overall fitment so these are the four rounds which is related to your role which is related to your tech stack and everything the last and final interview which is culture call which is very very important in our company especially uh so this is this uh, this interview round is related to the behavioral aspect of yours to check the overall fitment in the company it is not related to the team it is related to the company so it is a standard process in every role and there is a special defined team for the culture call in our company in bloomridge it is not the case that anyone can take the culture call we have a standard team we have a few people who have been trained for the cultural aspect where we try to cover the culture values that we do follow in bloomridge like think no drama truth ownership and all that so we usually give the hypothetical situation and try to understand a candidate approach whether he or she is someone who takes the team with them with them or he is a solo player or is he saying truth or is he trying to impress you and doing some drama and all that so this is a very important call and let me tell you one thing i have seen people who who got a strong feedback in the technical interviews but if they got a no in a culture call we didn't hire them so it is very important step so this is a five step standard process in bloomridge that we do follow great thank you so much for sharing that let's move to the next slide Uh, which is about job opportunities so uh, here we have two sections which is active jobs and passive jobs active jobs are the ones which is currently available on the website if you go and you can apply for it and passive jobs are the one um, that are not currently uh, updated over there but it, there are chances that it can be open in the near future so over to you priyanka you can just give an overview about the job opportunities um uh, uh, as the as you can see in the active job these all three are the technical jobs uh these all are related to the engineering departments we are hiring for sd2 in the analytics team we are also hiring for staff quality assurance engineer it is very much relevant to the architect level position uh level 4 and then we have staff software engineer which is again a engineering position for delivery team again it's an architect level position which is very very active and we are literally uh, hiring very aggressively on these three position which is super critical for india team passive job as they were rightly mentioned that these jobs are not active at the moment but we we are planning to hire for these particular roles in 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 10 or 15 days maybe we'll make it active in 10 15 days it is it has low priority compared to these active jobs so one is uh, site reliability engineer and then it help desk engineer we're looking for india team though we follow a remote culture but for this it help desk engineer role we are literally looking for someone who can come at least twice a week to the office because this this is the demand of the role because you have to deal with the day to day it related issues and then we have a contractual uh, position for quality role this is a one, one year contractual position for quality assurance engineer role and this is a level 1 position where we are looking for just one year of experience and uh, that's it great uh, so wonderful insights ranka your wealth of career advice has been valuable for our audience who are job seekers so as we wrap up our presentation we are moving to the q and a session and uh, we have already received some uh, great questions from the audience for those who haven't yet uh, added your questions in the chat box you can uh, drop it so let's pick it up great so um, to start with uh there was a question which is uh, these days if we look at the jds the list of expectation is endless and it makes a lot of candidates feel like they are in, incompetent so what should be our approach if we really want to work in that company definitely you should look after the jd and i totally agree with you sometimes people do expect a lot and and they try to mention each and everything related to that particular role so i will suggest make your cv in a way that it it is a it has a short uh, snapshot of your career and the project but it should have the relevancy of the project and the tech stack that you have used and let's say that 
uh, there are few keywords that is matching to your profile which you literally used in your in your career in your past project try to highlight those those particular key- keywords in your resume make it bold or something and try to use those keywords from the from the jd obviously uh, it is not it is not the always the case that you have all the relevant skill set but i think if you have 50 to 60% of them and if if you have uh, have a good stability in your career if you work with a good product based company and if your resume looks presentable you will definitely get a chance because i'm not sure about other people but i do literally feel if you know each and everything then why will you come and join us there should be some gap where you can definitely see forward okay okay in this company i will get a chance to work on maybe python i haven't worked for but i am looking forward to it so this is something that you can present in your process in the interview process that okay you are willing to work on it or you have done some personal projects or something like that but whatever you have worked on try to pick those words from jd and highlight in your resume so that your resume looks appealing and it will get selected for the process right thanks for answering that so we have another question which is if you have good experience but you have one year uh, career break then salary expectation should be same as last salary or higher than last salary or little bit negotiate so this totally depends on the situation i'll be honest because the in at least uh, in these days i'm looking many i'm getting many profiles who has like a career break or a break for any other reason because as you know the market uh, people were laid off last year as well they are getting laid off this year as well so they were literally struggling to get the right opportunity and i have seen many cvs who has the career gap for example 6 months or a year so we are considering those profiles because we do understand the reason behind the gaps it could be a personal break as well it could be a layoff reason as well so when you talk about the compensation it t- depends on various factors if i talk about bloomberg so it depends on parity as well so for example uh, for a particular role i am hiring for there is a budget assigned to that particular role which is not in the hand of a recruiting team not a hiring team this is something that company the finance team has decided for a particular role okay this is the assigned budget for this particular role if let's say there is a budget of x amount and you were at x minus 5 lakhs in the last year and if you have the particular expectation i don't think company will afraid to pay you i mean you can definitely have the expectation as per the market standards but if you feel that okay you have this is the right opportunity for this is the right company for you this is the right role for you and you can definitely survive and if let's say company uh, doesn't have the particular budget i think you should be open for the discussion but i will not say that you should be ready to come on saying you should definitely ask as per the company or the market standards because that was not your mistake or that was not that didn't happen by by something you know intentionally so definitely you should demand according to the market standard but if company has a particular restriction they will be open to you okay we do not have a defined budget and if you think that this is the opportunity for you i think you should open to explore as well because sometimes it happens when you come to the process hiring manager or the hiring team get so impressed and they try to fight with the finance team as well i have seen that in my career so do not afraid to ask for money because definitely you are going to work for that particular money as well. so should definitely demand as per the market expectation but should be open for the discussion as well okay so we have another question which is after 10 years 10 plus years in a development how many pages of resume are recommended to secure a shortlist for an interview i don't say more than two or three pages to be very honest make it short you should you can make a font in a better way because when it is a long resume nobody is you know worried to look for a long cv nobody is taking care of the uh, taking care to read the entire 8 10 pages of the cvs and the cover letter to be very honest i mean i have seen people people do reject this is my experience try to make it short uh when okay when you have 10 years of experience though like if there are chances that you worked with four or five companies so you can uh uh you know hi, uh, hide your uh, initial experience of project you can just mention okay worked with xyz company for let's say 2010 to 12 or then 12 to 14 whatever it is but after like your your recent 5 6 experience you can el- elaborate if hiring ma- hiring team is coming back to you why you didn't highlight then maybe you can answer them but i think your recent project matters a lot because 
this is your recent knowledge this is your recent uh, experience if you're feeling that this is getting longer so try to hide your previous experience i'm not saying try just eliminate it write it there but do not elaborate it because people look for the recent project for your selection okay thanks for answering that so uh, we have a question which is i guess we have two three questions around this so uh, freshers can apply for a uh, few positions in two cases some of them if like they have a good years of experience in other fields and they want to uh, get started with some of the position and they have some technical knowledge about it but haven't worked particularly for that designation so uh, can they apply for it it depends on role to role to be very honest with you so if it comes to a engineering hiring we as a bloomrich are very particular about it about the education background about the previous experience but as i mentioned there is a role quality assurance engineer for contraction so there we are very open and flexible if that role is for the automation but if someone has worked on manual testing and he wants to be automation test tester then we are uh, open enough we are very flexible to uh, give him or her a chance for the interview and definitely because you have worked on manual so we are okay to give you a chance uh, to you know present yourself in manual particular field only we'll not ask you question related to automation if you really want to learn we'll just see your calibration your aspiration whether you have that learning uh, you know just or not so there are people who really want to shift to their domain from development to testing or maybe to the uh, uh, you know devops side we are pretty open for such roles uh, when it comes to early level uh, entry level position obviously not relevant for the sd2 sd3 sd4 types uh, level but yeah for entry level position we are open and flexible for few roles but not for every role to be very honest because it depends on hiring manager as well because in remote it is very difficult to train as well people okay so let's pick the last question for today which is if someone has experience in two or more different fields should he list all those experience for each and every job he is applying for no i want to recommend that as i mentioned in my uh, presentation as well like you should really work on your cv and you should highlight your cv in a way uh, like the job is looking for for example i am looking for a back end developer and you are you are literally applying for a back end development role but you are working as a full stack developer you have the knowledge for front end as well you have the knowledge for back end as well so resume is the first thing that is making impression of yours so you have to be smart enough you literally you should literally highlight your back end work more and you should not highlight more your front end work because sometimes hiring team is very choosy okay he's a full stack developer and i can definitely get a four back end developer in the market but you never know you can answer all the questions related to back end you just need a chance to present yourself and this chance can be given to you based on your resume so you should uh, make your resume in a way like the so that it could it will look an appealing way to the job that you are applying for so whenever you are sharing your cv to any job make sure you are going to through the jd very carefully and trying try to pick the words and highlight those words in your resume it will have a higher chance to make a success and this will give you an opportunity to present yourself and then floor is yours if you are coming to the process then it is yours floor then you can do anything you can do one that you can impress anyone okay so i think i we have one more interesting question and let's pick that up so uh, rather than revealing the budget rec- recruiter ask our current and expected ctc they only reveal it when our demand exceeds their budget this keeps a candidate underpaid and eventually leads to job hopping please help us with negotiation i think this is a very wrong approach i don't think recruiter should do that because if recruiter has a right to ask your current compensation then you should all, you also have a right to ask the particular role budget the budget that is assigned to that particular role uh okay i'm not sure about other company but that doesn't happen in plumish i'll give an example that because that's a very interesting question so i would like to share the inside story so last year we were hiring for a sd2 role and uh, we offered to a candidate an x amount and uh, because he was expecting that amount and it was a very good hike on his current compensation he was really happy he was he started serving notice period he accepted that offer after 15 20 days there was a different position in the same team like we wanted to hire one more engineer for the same team 
and he was getting uh, higher than the than that that particular candidate so according to his, his expectation we offered x plus something to him and uh, when we were looking at the score cards we felt that the previous candidate had the better score card the better feedback you know what we have done we literally called that candidate and he was about to join in 5 7 days and we said that we want to revise your offer because we offered x plus 5 to some candidate who has who, who is joining the same team at the same level and we were when we were looking to the score card it, we felt that he was stronger than him so we literally called them and this literally happened i'm not making any story this is something that happened in front of me we literally revised the offer and he was like why are you doing so we, we felt that we, we said that because you are literally owning it and you You, 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 this is something that you have earned because of your scorecard, because of your interview performance, and we did that without any, uh, without any doubt. And hiring manager was so happy that we are maintaining the parity. So I think uh, this is your right. You should definitely ask this question: What is the assigned budget before telling your expectation? I don't think in this market we have this particular rule. Okay, twenty percent is the market standard, thirty percent hike is the market standard. No, it is not the market standard these days. It totally depends how you are presenting yourself. and what is the assigned budget that totally depends okay this is depends on company to company but yeah if company has the budget i don't think they will afraid to you know to give you anything if you will crack the process i mean we do not afraid oh great so uh, i think we should end this session on this note so for the people who have added their questions here and we haven't asked it so you can join our uh, community on discord we'll send the link to priyanka as well she'll be joining our discord so you can put up your questions there and i'm sure priyanka will uh, try to answer them there so thank you so much priyanka for sharing such valuable insights and career advice with us today um, and your expertise has undoubtedly enriched our understanding and will guide many of us uh, for their career career journey and we deeply appreciate your efforts for the growth of our community thank you so much thank you divya thank you for having me and it was a great session thank you yes so uh, for the people who have joined the session you can uh, register on uplers you can find various job postings over there and you can apply through it and for the people who have still have some questions and they want to attend other such webinars you can just join our discord community and our whatsapp group as well where you will get the notifications of other sessions as well uh, and we'll share the recordings and everything on social media and whatsapp So stay tuned for another such session and thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you.